In this video, I'm going to show you how to use shared preferences in Android. So for the app that I've done so far, uh, in uh, the activity main XML, you can see that I've just added three components. I've got a normal text view with an ID of TV welcome. I've got a normal edit text with a hint, please enter your name, and then the ID ET name. And I've got a button with the text submit on it and the ID BTN submit. So in the main activity, I've set up the text view, the edit text, and the button, all three of them. In coding, I link to them using the find view by ID method. And then on the button, I set the on click listener so that when that button gets clicked, it will go to this on click method. Now, if we quickly have a look at the app, you can see it just says welcome message will be displayed here. So if I go back to activity main, you can see it says welcome message will be displayed here. Please enter your name and submit. So that's exactly what, what we've got there. And then I allow the user to enter his name. So let's just enter a name there. Let's call, let's say Peter. And if I click submit, you'll see in the main activity, as soon as the method gets clicked or the, the button gets clicked, this method runs and we get the name that whatever the user typed there. So it's, it's going to et name, which is the edit text dot get text dot to string dot trim. Trim just removes the, the, the leading or trailing white space if the user accidentally clicked on the space bar or whatever. Okay, so we just get the name and then we set the text on the text view as welcome to my app and then just displaying the name. So if the guy types Peter and we click on submit, it says welcome to my app Peter. But if I go down now and I remove this app, oh, I've got a lot of things open here go down to shared preferences there's the app and i run the app it will just say again welcome message will be displayed here and i need to type peter again and say submit so let's say you want to persist this name peter and every time the app opens up we want to say welcome to my app peter the guy has set his name now once so it should now always say peter so if you want to do something like this if you have relatively small collection of key values that you'd like to say. For example, a key and a value could be, uh, so let's say you call something a name and then the name that you save is Peter. So the key will be name and the value will be Peter. Then you can use the shared preferences API. So a shared preferences object points to a file that contains key value pairs and provides simple methods to read and write them. And the nice thing about that, it persists it on the phone, not in RAM, random access memory, but in physical storage, which means that even though the phone was switched off and you switch back on the phone, your app should still have that data and you can show the data again. So you can use shared preferences where you'd like to maybe sh share uh, or, or save a, a high score of an app that you're creating or a game that you're creating or whatever. So it's just small pieces of data that you want uh, to save. Also settings for your app. That would be a nice way to save settings of your app, for example. Okay, so let's see how we can do something like this. So let's say after the user has entered his, entered his name, we want to save that name now in a file somewhere. But I don't want to use an SQL database or an external file or something like that. I'm just going to use a simple shared preferences key value pair in order to save my data on the phone. So the first thing in order to save data is you need to have a file name for your specific file that you're going to save on the phone. So I'm going to say public uh, static final. And let's call this one or let's make it a string and let's call it my preferences file name, something like that. And then you can give it a name as a stream, so for, as the name for your file. So the guys from Android says, well, just to make sure that there's no other app that's using the same file, just use your package there as the beginning of it. And then you can add uh, anything else you want. Let's say names or whatever. So in this case, that will be your preferences file name. That will be the name of your file. And it should be unique because it's, it's, your, um, it's your project uh, package name that you use there. So it should be unique in your app. So let's see how we can set this up there. So in order to create a new file, you're going to say shared preferences dot editor. 
Okay, so shared preferences dot editor. Let's call it editor equals get shared preferences. And then for the first argument, you need to give your, your name for your specific file that you're going to use. And we called it my preferences file name. So that's the one that we called it, my preferences file name. So that's the name of your file. And then you need to indicate the mode. So we normally use mode private. So you can see there's mode uh, world readable, writable, and so forth. But uh, the one that we actually want to use here is mode private, which means that only my f my specific application will have access to the specific file that I'm creating. Okay, so after doing that, shared preferences editor equals get shared preferences, indicating your file name and the mode private. You're all set up and ready to go. So after this, you just call dot edit. And then uh, we can carry on from there. Okay, so now we've got a connection to this file and the file is now created and now we can go and save data to it. So I can go and call either editor dot put string. So if it's a string, I'm going to say put string. If it's a boolean, I'm going to say put boolean. If it's an int, I'm going to say put int. So it depends on what you want to save and you can see it's a key and a value pair. So for this example, I'm going to use a string because the name is a string. So I'm going to say, well, for the for the, the key, it must be a string. So what is the key going to be called? So let's just call it name. So the data I'm going to save is the name of the person that's using this app. And then the name of this person will be that variable name. So here we've got a nice key value pair. So just to not confuse you, let's call this key user. So that's the name of the data I'm going to save. It's called user. And the data that I'm saving is this specific name that the guy typed uh, on the edit text. And we've got that name. So for example, if the user types Peter and I click on submit, then the name that we're saving there is Peter. But the key is called user. So that's the user is called Peter. So that's what we're saving. And then after you've saved, you can just go, or after you've added data to it, you can just go and call commit, which will then save the data to the file. But remember, you can add more than one um, put string there. So you can have 20 different put strings here and then commit at the end. It's, it's really up to you on what you want to do here. Okay, so now what happens now when the user types Pete and he clicks on submit, it now creates that shared preferences file and it saves a key value pair as user and then the name that the user typed. So that's, that's great now it's been saved. But how do we see actually if it was saved successfully? So just outside of this method of the button, let's go and see, uh, and just to, to make sure everybody understands, I'm going to do this before the button, but you can do it after the button. It won't, it won't make a difference. So as soon as this app starts, we want to show welcome to my app and then whatever the guy's name is. So we first need to get the name of that guy. So in order to make a connection again to that file, I'm going to use that exact same line again. So that gives the connection to the file. So I've got the connection to the file. And now from the file, I need to get a specific key value pair. So I'm going to say string because the name that I've saved there is a string. So I'm going to say string name of the guy, or let's say just a string user, equals this editor object now, which is a connection, connection to the file. And now remember that we used the put string method there. So in order to get it back, we call the get string method. So I'm going to call get string. Okay, so the get string method won't work here because we're just using the normal editor there. And now we can use the get string method there. And you need to indicate a string there, and this one will be user. So let's just get the error here gone. Uh, you need to remove that edit at the back as well. So we've got basically shared preferences editor or whatever you want to call it. Let's call this one prefs and then use that one also as prefs. Okay, so we've got shared preferences, preferences equals get shared preferences. So when you need to edit it, you need to use the editor in order to change values or to save new values. And you need to call the edit method. But if you're just using it, it's shared preferences without dot editor there, prefs equals get shared preferences, indicating the file in the mode, and then you can start extracting it. So now it says string user equals preferences that connection to the file dot get string. Now here we said put string and that's the key.
So what it needs here is the first argument. You can see it takes in two arguments. So the first argument is your key for the value that you want to get returned. And the second argument is the default value that you want to have returned. So uh, we can say null there, which will be the default, which means that if this user does not exist, if that key does not exist in your file, it will return null and user will refer to null. So in this specific case, let's not set null there, but just a simple space. So it's basically gonna show nothing. So it will say, welcome to my app, instead of saying, welcome to my app, with the name okay so the user will then either have the value for this key so the key is user and the value should return whatever we saved in name and if that specific key does not exist there it will return just that simple space to be saved in user okay so now what we can do is to go to tv welcome again and set the text set the text to this exact same thing but now name is now replaced by user there. So we're using that user. So it's going to be tvwelcome.setText, welcome to my app, using whatever the user has been saved as, either the space or that specific user that he typed there, and we display the user and then the exclamation mark. So let's see if this works. Okay, so it says welcome to my app. So that's, that's the only thing it says because nothing has been saved at this stage. So let's add Peter there and say submit. So now it says, welcome to my app, Peter. So if I go back and I remove this now from memory and run this app again, let's go to shared preferences. It says, welcome to my app, Peter. But if that, if that specific user did not exist or that key did not exist, uh, we would have returned a space then it would have just said, welcome to my app. So I hope that you understand the shared preferences part now. So in order to, to actually save data to that file, you need a file name. So right at the top, we created this static final string. So that's the name of the file. So then you call shared preferences.editor is get shared preferences. There's the name of your file and the mode, either private or whatever. Private means only accessible to your specific app. And then you call edit. Then on that object, you call one of the put methods, either put string, put boolean, put int, put whatever. The first argument, normally a string, and that's the name of the key. And the second argument is your value that you want to save with that key. And you can use as many put methods as you like. And after that, you need to call commit in order to save it. If you want to retrieve it back, you're going to say shared preferences without the dot editor there prefs equals get shared preferences again accessing the file name again saying the mode without the dot edit there and then you can just on that object you can just call get string if you used put string if you said put boolean it will be get boolean and then as the first argument you give the key that you want to retrieve the value of and the second argument will be the default value if that specific key does not exist I hope you understand shared preferences. Have a nice day.